Hey guys, Colorado Camperman Brian here. Getting ready to go on a truck camping trip and one of my subscribers, Tree Thunder, so a little shout out to you there. Uh, he had requested I make a video on how I load my truck camper. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys in the video here today. So before, uh, actually for about the last year or so, here and a little over here actually, I just had these two jacks. So they're crank style jacks. And what I would do was I found the center point of the camper so that when I would lift it up, um, it would sort of balance. Problem was though, it would teeter back and forth and honestly, it was pretty dangerous. Um, so when I originally bought the truck camper, I actually originally had these hydraulic uh, pump jacks. Um, I didn't know for sure if they actually had worked or not and my neighbor was gonna help me unload the truck camper uh, one day and um, figured out that all they needed was just a, a little bit of fluid so these babies uh, work really nicely right now um, so I ended up putting we put uh, one on each corner in the back here so I only had uh, three I only came with three of these hydraulic pump jacks and then two of the crank jacks. So right now we just have the two crank jacks on the front and then the two hydraulic pump jacks on the back here. So basically what I do when I get my truck camper ready to uh, lift it on up, to get all my jacks in position, I have cinder blocks all under all of them. I make sure they're basically set in the, the right place. And with the pump jacks there, they're already read, ready to go on blocks and stuff. And then I have my truck in position because you do have to line your truck up pretty straight on that's probably the most difficult part about loading a truck camper which i'll show you guys kind of where you want to put it so once you have everything in place and you go ahead and start lifting up uh, your jacks and your camper so this is a little easier if you have two people or if i have two people here but i'm just going to show you guys how i can do it by myself well, pretty much i start out um, always on the cranks and I get both sides going up and then I just kind of run around and lift everything up. Raise it up just a little bit and then go on the other side and then raise it up a little bit and just keep on going around. So if you look at the side shot, you can see the camper is raised high enough that the truck should slide right underneath it. I obviously have to move all my uh, blocks and timbers under there, which I'll do, but you gotta get it high enough first. And if you take a look from the back here, you can see that the truck camper is higher than the bed. So now that we got the truck camper lifted up high enough, we're going to go ahead and remove the timbers and the cinder blocks from below. And then we're going to back the truck on up. Now one thing that's really important, as I mentioned before, you've got to make sure the bed of the truck lines up with the camper. As you can see, the camper is slanted one way and the truck is slanted the other. So we're going to have to try to line it up. The base of your camper, uh, the bottom of it, it's probably about 44 inches wider. That's about how big mine is, 44 or 46, I think. Between my wheel wells, it's 48 inches. So there's not really a um, big window of wiggle room there. Uh, so you gotta be pretty dead on as far as coming back straight. So again, just to show you guys another view, you can see the camper is clearly more angled that way. And my truck is more angled that way. So we're gonna go ahead and line the truck up so it's in line with the camper. One thing that also really helps is obviously you gotta get in line, but you wanna have a center point, a visual center point in your truck. Like I use this right here to try to line it up in the center point, which I have just in the dead center of those windows. You wanna try to line the two up, okay? 
uh, when you're backing things up. So that just is kind of one tip and one thing that I do is I make sure I kind of line my center point up. All right, we're gonna back this baby up. Once I get my tailgate underneath the truck camper, I go ahead and remove the timbers and the center blocks. All right, so the cinder blocks and the timbers are removed. You can see I'm still not straight, but my center point is good. So I'm just gonna crank my wheel uh, to the right so my truck's back end goes in line with the camper here. All right, so you can see I got a pretty good amount of space right here i'll show you guys uh hop over to the other side and show you what that side looks like this side i basically have zero room in fact i'm probably gonna hit so i'm gonna need to straighten things out move forward and realign myself all right so we're doing much better here we're still very close but uh we're gonna make it uh, it sounds like we did hit on the back though. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lift the camper up a little bit more. You can see right here I just barely hit. And I'm going to need to raise the camper up just a hair higher. And with that I think we're good. So here's one thing that I screwed up on. I did not move my cinder block out far enough. And so my tire is hitting the cinder block and I'm not all the way backed up yet. So I'm gonna have to drop the truck camper in the truck and then move that cinder block over. Unfortunately, I need these cinder blocks because my truck is so high uh, there's no way I'd be able to lift the truck camper up with just the jacks himself. So this is one of the issues that I have run into before. It's kind of a pain, but it only takes a couple minutes to fix it. Alright, so we got it realigned. Now we're just going to go ahead and back it on up. Back's lifted up high enough to get the truck realigned. And we're just going to go ahead and bring it on home. Good to go. So you can see we're flush right up against the front bed rail. And then the wheel wells are really close. We still have the truck hamper up on the jacks. So all we're gonna do now is go ahead and lower the jacks. And we'll lower the truck hamper into the truck and we're good to go. Now, since these hydraulic jacks are um, actually on the camper, we're going to go ahead and raise them on up and then lock them into place. There's a little lock here, box it in, so it's not going to drop as we're driving down the road. Alright, so here's what the truck camper looks like all loaded up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get her all strapped down now. So imagine if, uh, if you had the electronic, the auto jacks, uh, you'd probably be out camping already. So <laughs> that took me probably like 35, 40 minutes to do, to lift it all up. That was by myself, so it's not terrible, but uh, it certainly would be really nice if, uh, yeah, if you do have the electronic jacks, that makes things a heck of a lot easier. Saves you a lot of time. So on my truck hamper on each corner there's this eye bolt and this is where I attach uh, ratchet down and then I just take the ratchet down from here 
and then I go somewhere underneath the frame. One thing that you want to make sure you do is that your tie down is towards the front of the truck. Because if you want your camper, <laughs> well, you don't want your camper to move, but if it were to move, you want to make sure that it's going towards the front of the truck and not out the back of your truck and dumping somewhere on the highway. That almost happened to us actually when we first got the truck. Um, one mistake we made is we put a couple sheets of plywood in the bed of the truck to raise the camper up because these bed rails are taller than our old truck. So that was mistake number one. Mistake number two is the ratchet down was angled towards the back. So when the truck camper, when we were going uphill and we accelerated, it actually had slid back. And I think it was because of the plywood that was underneath, but I also think it was because of the ratchet down because it went pretty much right directly to where the ratchet down was. So the ratchet down was straight up versus being angled. Luckily, we were only about three and a half miles away from being home. So I turned around, slammed on the brakes, truck camper went back into place. We drove back home, lifted the camper up, took the boards out, and uh, I screwed some two by fours on the bottom just to raise the truck camper up. So we're good now, lesson learned. <laughs> Good thing uh, nothing bad happened, but uh, uh, learn from my mistake because it could definitely be a costly one. If you use the same uh, ratchet downs for every corner too, if you have a way of labeling them or making sure they use the same ones, then you barely have to adjust it all. So that's what I do. That's one other tip. I do keep the ratchet downs a little loose initially. And then once I get all four of them on, then I'll tighten them up. All right, so we got her all strapped down. This is a pretty uh, neat little thing. My neighbor, uh, he used to have a truck camper. He gave me this little hitch step, which is awesome. It takes up a heck of a lot less space than the other uh, step that I had. There's that side. All right, so that wraps up uh, this video on how I load my truck camper. Uh, if you guys do have any questions about anything, or maybe I didn't go in as much detail as you would have liked, feel free to, to message me below. Um, I'll also post a video uh, uh, for this trip here. I'll put a link in here. Uh, we're gonna go do some snowboarding up at Copper Mountain for a few days. We're gonna camp for two nights. We'll be over there three days, so. We'll get two days of boarding in because we're leaving right now. It's like 6.30. So, anyways, thank you guys for checking out the video here today. Uh, please subscribe, and we'll see you later. There's TJ, Colorado camper man's dog. He just got a bath. TJ, come here. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at that TJ. Say hi, TJ. Hi. Good boy.